Original. And welcome to Web Crawlers, a podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. I'm Ali Siegel. I'm Melissa Stetton. And we need to change this introduction to what the chat bot <gasps> wrote for us, because I, I forgot. I liked it so much better. I know. We did. I, I put... I, into chatbot, the AI thing, I said, yeah. write me a, um episode of Webcrawler's podcast. It w- it scared me. We're yeah, going to do a was... Patreon about it and we'll share all of it. And yeah. Maybe I'll post them on Instagram, but it was shocking. It was really shocking. And it was like, and the weirdest part was that they invited guests on and they had guests real interviews. guests. Like I yeah, Googled they were the people. people. I'm like, oh, you're an actual like cybersecurity specialist. <laughs> yeah, they get better. Chatbot got better guests than we get than we're <laughs> able to pull. Um, so anyways, That's we'll cool. put that on Patreon. Um, we'll do, we'll read the uh, episodes that Chatbot wrote for yeah, us. That's cool. Um Speaking of Patreon, Melissa, who are our Patreons? Patrons We've got Jimmy, Ashley, and Teresa. Mother. Mother Teresa. Teresa. Jinx. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, guys, welcome to the team. We did an episode on the Murdoch. Murdoch? Or Murdoch? Well, the the most annoying thing is that it's spelled like Murdoch, but they pronounce it Murdoch. Okay. Just that should be illegal in itself. Yeah. <laughs> the Murdoch family, we did an episode on them already, but now there's a new documentary series about them on Netflix. The trial is going on right now. So we thought that we would do a little update. Melissa wrote an amazing doc about everything that's going on right now. I thought that I would start it off with a little family tree for those yeah, who do not just a remember. refresher. A refresh. Uh Obviously, listen to the episode, but for those who maybe didn't have time or just want to listen to the update. Mm -hmm. So it all started with Randy Murdoch III. He was born in 1939. He worked for Pumped, the Murdoch law firm. P-E-D. It's like their last name. Pumped. (laughs) He worked for Pumped. He worked for Vanderpump Rules <laughs> at, at Sir. He worked for Pump. He was at um, Sir. He was you the can back find house. Him at the first <laughs> season of Vanderpump Rules. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you remember um, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he. Okay. So he's like the, he's the patriarch of the family. He's Paul's grandfather. So he, he died. Had, he's dead. He dead in 2021. Oh, of being sick. <laughs> he died of being sick. He died of the sickness, which is weird because that's the same month that the mom and the mom and uh, son died. Oh, yeah. So the, the mom and son died June 7th and he died June 10th. Oh, that of I didn't know that. That's that's very soon. There he after. died of a broken heart. I mean, honestly, maybe. Yeah. Um, so then he had three kids, Randy, Alex, and John. Randy also worked at Sir. <laughs> Pumps. <laughs> at Pumps. He seems kind of normal, right? He, he, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's the, John, the chaotic good of the brothers. Yeah. Is John also kind of normal? Yes. We will find out that John... D- they didn't know what Alec, Alex, Alec was doing this whole time. Okay. And yeah, so Alex and Alex slash, slash Alec, uh, they call him Alec, <sighs> is stupid. who's on trial right now. Yes, and currently. He's, he's a bad, bad boy. He's a bad um, boy. <laughs> he worked for PM. PED. I don't know why that's like so. He worked for Sir also. <laughs> um, he was, uh, he's a pill head. Yeah. Opioids. Pill popper. Pill popper. He was he was fired from his own law firm that mm-hmm. is that his dad started. And he he's on trial now for shooting his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. Mm hmm. And then 
Paul also drunkenly crashed a boat in 2019, which killed Mallory Beach. Right. There's and a the Netflix documentary goes through all of this stuff. Yes. But he's currently dead. Paul's dead. And he, yeah, he's dead. Alex killed him. So there's no trial for that murder because Paul's dead now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that wraps up the family tree. There's Melissa, Buster too, the other oh, son. Oh yeah, Buster Bluth. And he <laughs> allegedly involved in the murder of Stephen Smith, July right. 2015. Who the fuck is Stephen Smith? Well, Stephen Smith is this kid who died. He was found dead in the middle of a road, like a country road in 2015. He was 19. I believe he went to um, high school with the Murdoch boys. And they said there's no no one knows what happened. They said it was a hit and run. But there was a lot of rumors going around that perhaps Buster and his friends killed him because Stephen Smith was gay. And there were rumors that Buster may have been in a relationship with him. Oh, shit. And there's a lot of questions around that that maybe Buster and his friends like one night because I, I guess they texted him that night and like I mean his he, car they, ran out of gas it. and he was texting them asking for help and that oh, it's God. very suspicious. Also, I forgot to mention as well, the housekeeper Gloria. died. Gloria allegedly fell down the stairs because the, the dogs pushed her down. Uh-huh. A real a real staircase owl theory. Um, yeah. And it's alleged that Maggie, the mother, pushed her down, right? It's, the, yeah, they don't know. Or Alex? They don't, they, yeah, either Alec or Maggie, because there was a she, wrongful death lawsuit against, yeah. and Alec was the only dependent, and so she had two sons, and neither of which were named as, like, representatives of her estate. So what happened was the two sons didn't get any money Alec was laundering the money back to himself. And that's what he was also on trial for, for money laundering. And then also it's alleged that Gloria knew about. Yeah, that's why all that's, that. they yeah. think that she knew about all of the laundering and whatever. And so he killed her. Yeah. Um, all right, Melissa, get into <laughs> your these notes because you really you got into it. So. So, yeah, we did our episode October 2021. That's crazy. And so much has happened. So this family, they've been involved in a bunch of scandals. They're like the, one of the richest and most influential families in Hampton, South Carolina. Um, we got the housekeeper. We got the boat crash where Paul was driving the boat. And they tried to make it seem like Connor was driving yeah. the boat, the friend. Like, they all came to the hospital. Like, the dad, the grandpa came to the hospital. was like, don't say anything. We're going to pin this on Connor or whatever. Um, he Horrible. Paul was in, ended up charged with three felonies. He never went to jail, though. Nothing ever happened to him. Also, I'll say, like, it was really scary. They, they show a lot of footage, mm-hmm. like cell phone camera footage and stuff in the yeah. documentary, which is interesting to see and always really illuminating of Paul when he's super drunk. Also, yeah. Paul physically abuses to his girlfriend. Yes. Um, him wasted reminded me so much of my alcoholic, physically abusive bo- ex boyfriend. <gasps> oh, like, no. when you look in their eyes, like, yeah. are there's nothing there. Like, it's terrifying. You could tell that the you can't diagnose anyone else with alcoholism. And I, I'm not. I'm saying this as an opinion. You could, I don't, I don't even know how to preface this. I I really feel like this Paul was an alcoholic because mm-hmm. like the way his whole personality changed. Yeah. And like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Paul is dead. So they can't, they can't go through with the trial of like a wrongful death thing. So they don't, it's, what do you, what do you do? Um, yeah, there was Stephen Smith, but the police never proved that it was linked to Buster or anybody. So the family, Paul's grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather, they were all the solicitors of South Carolina from 1920 to 2006. A solicitor is like an elected official, like district attorney. 
And then we come to June 7th, 2021. 22-year-old Paul Murdoch, his 52-year-old mother Maggie, were found dead at their family's 1,700-acre property where their hunting lodge is, which is about 60 miles west of Charleston. And they were both shot dead. So then Alec Murdoch called 911 around 10.07 p.m. to say that he found them dead. And according to the police report, they died between 9 and 9.30 p.m. And Alec, he wasn't arrested, but he was named a person of interest. They were like, okay, well, we're looking at a ton of other people. He had an alibi, said he was at his mom's house. But then... Three months later, Alec Murdoch was shot in the head on the side of the road. So September 24th, 2021, he called 911 from the side of a road. He said he was changing tire on his car, and it was like a superficial wound, which means it just like grazed his head. That's insane. The 911 call is like, I've been shot. Yeah. <laughs> and, the call, and the operator's like, okay, well... Are you in any trouble? Are you okay? He's like, I don't know. There's blood. And it's really it's like my, strange. Yeah, but it, yeah, and then the woman's like, from where? And she's like, I don't know. Like, my head is just kind of bleeding. It's just kind of <laughs> bleeding, I think. Yeah. Just kind of <laughs> shot in the head. And then a few days after that, this weird shit got weird. So Alec issued an apology. He admitted to having a drug problem, money problems, his law firm blamed him for misappropriating millions of dollars, and his lawyer said he was in rehab. Everyone was like, huh? Where did this? This came out of nowhere. Yeah. And then 10 days after the shooting occurred, Curtis Edward Smith is arrested in connection to the assisted suicide shooting of Alec Murdoch. They said Alec admitted that this whole scheme was set up so his surviving son, Buster, would collect a $10 million life insurance policy because apparently suicides are not, you don't get life insurance from that or there's oh, some policies where you don't get that. So he want, he hired someone sense. to shoot. It was one of his drug dealers, apparently, to shoot oh, him. God. But it didn't, <laughs> it didn't work. I don't know what yeah. happened there. <laughs> no, bad and aim. then November 2021, the Hampton County Grand Jury issued three charges against Alec for the murder for hire scheme to gain insurance money. And his accomplice was Curtis Edward Smith. So he was also charged with this. Hmm. But then 15 days later, the grand jury issued five more indictments on 27 charges of embezzlement and other crimes, including breach of trust fraudulent intent, money laundering, computer crimes, and forgery. This this podcast is a computer crime. This is a computer Boing. crime. Boing! Honk, honk. <laughs> uh, the victims were a patrol officer, uh, some other guy, Gloria Satterfeld was the housekeeper because he stole money from the sons. Altogether, the fraud amount was about $4.8 million. Jesus. But then, in total, the indictments indicate he may have stolen 8.7 million dollars for more than a dozen people and oh these crimes God. go back to 2011 so what he would do he would secretly negotiate a settlement for his clients and be like yeah i got you all this money and then pay them only enough so that they would be content and like thankful for a while then he would steal the rest of the money like he would oh give them God. a little bit of money they'd be like oh this is great and then he would just like put it like oh yeah more money's coming more money's coming but he would just take it all for himself. That's so crazy. And his clients were usually minorities who were not well off. And it, they, it wasn't like he was stealing from rich people. These were like people who needed the money. It's like he stole from a state trooper, family friends, a deaf man, an immigrant living in the country illegally. Uh, Jen Shaw shit. Yeah. He allegedly used money given to an unnamed family member to help launder the cash. Oh, he was scheming. He was yeah, scheming. fuck. So then a year later, June 2022, a year after Maggie and Paul were dead, he was indicted on two counts relating to a conspiracy to purchase and distribute narcotics using a money laundering scheme involving $2.4 million in stolen money. So he was also like getting drugs, like selling drugs or like getting drugs from yeah. like, tons and tons of pills. 
the guy in the documentary was like he had enough money to buy opioids for like 140 years yeah. or something <laughs> yeah 147 years like at the maximum dosage of like yeah what you can take before dying it's crazy um so then in july 2022 he was officially charged with murder of his wife and son mm. so the indictment says alex shot his wife with a rifle and then his son with a shotgun to use two different weapons they said that there's high velocity blood splatter on Alex's clothing, as well as cell phone footage, which placed Alec at the scene when his wife and son were shot dead. Which he had like lied about forever. He lied about. So the prosecutor yeah. suggested a motive to distract from his financial crimes, which were beginning to go public. And so he wanted sympathy. That's what they think he did it for. To be like, no, my wife and son died. Poor me. God. So then December 2022, he faces a total of 106 grand jury criminal charges, financial fraud, drugs, murdered. He's been disbarred. His assets seized. He's currently incarcerated. And the trial started. So this trial just started. And it's on the Law and Crime YouTube channel. Yeah, it's a good channel. It's, it's, it's a good channel. channel. It's, it's a good, a good watch. So some highlights that I've seen. Um, so yeah, the pill addiction said he takes up to 60 pills a day, which is like 2000 milligrams of oxycodone and wait, what, which is apparently unheard of for a doctor to, to prescribe more than a hundred milligrams a day for even well, like there's, the most, I'm sure he's not prescribed. So he it. was taking up to 60 pills a day, which I guess I, that's what happens when you have an addiction. Your tolerance goes up. Yeah. You're so. done. With tol- yeah. You I mean, that's what happens with with drinking is that it eventually right. stops working. Yeah, crazy is that like, you can take that many. Like his liver must be like totally shot. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like that's why like caffeine and like Adderall don't work for me. Because <laughs> like I'm just like I I think like honestly like your liver like addiction wise and like genetically like you just your body processes yeah. that stuff differently. Like, I think at a point, like, it just stops working for you. Yeah, it's really crazy that he was taking that many pills. That's it. And yeah, you, like, build up a tolerance. That's insane. And then he did admit on the stand that he wanted to die, so he enlisted Cousin Eddie to shoot him instead of taking more pills. We all have a Cousin Eddie. A Cousin Eddie. Uh, he said he wanted to die because he knew his drug addiction and the money laundering was going to come out and he knew how humiliating it was going to be for his son and he had $12 million in life insurance. But yeah, the other theory is that he wanted to make it look like Eddie tried to kill him and then tie him to the murder of Maggie right. and Paul. Like, look, there's someone coming after my family. Yes. Didn't work out for him. <laughs> and then the night of the murders... He originally claimed that he was not at the dog kennels the night of the murder. So the dog kennels are like another part of the property by their house. He took the stand. He admitted that he lied to investigators and that he was actually at the dog kennels that night. And there's a Snapchat video later recovered from his son Paul's phone captured Alex at the kennels at 8.44 p.m. Contradicting his alibi. So yeah. this, I have this video. So it's a Snapchat video that his son took. It doesn't show Alec, but it is his, it's his voice on the Snapchat video. This is just Paul at the kennels with the dogs. Just like hanging out with the dogs. And then you can hear. Quit, Cash. Come on. Quit. Come on. That's Maggie. That's Alec. So that's like a minute long video. You can hear like Alec and Maggie talking in the background. So what? This might be a stupid question, but why do we think he killed his wife and son? I think it was the whole thing. Thing to get sympathy because of his money laundering. Oh, okay. Like all oh, that so stuff. Because all like, that stuff, oh, his life is over already. So he's right, trying right, to right. get sympathy. Okay. I so guess gonna... like that's kind of so the theory. blaming it on someone else and being like, oh God, now my wife and son are dead. Yes. Like my yes. life is so horrible. Okay. 
let's take a quick break for announcements. Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to bonus episode shout outs, maybe some merch discounts. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. Also on Sunday, Maria, <gasps> you heard it. Maria and I will be going to Alien Con. Dun, dun, dun. And so we will probably splice together a main episode, but we will uh, have Lots of behind the scenes Patreon mm-hmm. footage, interviews, pictures, etc. for you guys, videos. So you can donate as little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons. And we will be hoping to go to a lot more conventions this year to give you yeah. guys behind the scenes uh, videos and interviews for our Patreon. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcast. If you give us a five star review, we will shout you out. If you give us a one star review, we might talk about you also <laughs> Erios sorry I just swallowed Erios has a hotline insert jingle here 626-604-6262 continue to call us please because our mailbag episodes are back full force you know who else is doing a mailbag episode is yes! what's up weirdo Yes. So if you listen to What's Up Weirdo, please give them a call and leave them a voicemail. Become a regular there too. I'm gonna I'm gonna prank call them. I know. They they were actually inspired by our mailbag episodes because they're so insane. They're like, we gotta do them. I'm like, you're gonna have even crazier callers. Yeah, they're because I feel like some of their callers have probably yeah. like been abducted or <laughs> For haunted sure. or things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so call in there. They need some regulars as well. And you can be from the inception one of their first callers. Back to our program. So then they had witnesses during the trial that they played the Snapchat video for, and they all said, yeah, that's Alex's voice. They all said it's his voice. Yeah, it's like, who else would it be? Oh, God. And then another Snapchat video from Paul shows Alec wearing different clothes than what he was wearing after the shooting. Like, it's just a video of his dad in, like, the backyard. <laughs> that's just a video of him, and he changed his clothes that day. Because they're probably covered in blood. Yeah. And then he said on the stand, other than lying to the police about going to the kennel, I was cooperative in every aspect of this investigation. (laughs) He's like, I lied. Yes, I lied about this, but I didn't lie about anything else. He said he was paranoid because of his addiction to pain pills and his paranoia. He's like, that's why I lied. Because I was paranoid. And then he also said, oh, it could have been his groundskeeper that killed them. Oh, okay. So, um, oh, is that Jen? Yes. So I guess somehow, I don't know if it was in the documentary or during the trial. (laughs) Yes, there was. I remember hearing there was a phone number being showed. Yeah. So they accidentally showed the groundskeeper's phone number. Yeah. And this girl I know texted him. (laughs) <laughs> who was writing an article on the yeah. whole murders. And she just texted him being like, hey, FYI, they showed your phone number yeah. during the trial or on the Netflix documentary. I'm not sure which one it was. And she's like, you should change your phone number if you don't want people texting yeah, you. Crazy. And he texted her back being like, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. I, yeah, I can't remember if that was during the trial that they showed if some, but they showed him. People are tweeting about it. Like, whose phone number is this? Yeah. Um, so Alex's alibi, he says he was napping at the time of his wife's and son's murders around 8.50 p.m. He says he yeah, then drove. That's a good drove... time to nap. Yeah, it is. Yeah, who nap? <laughs> no one's napping at 8.50. That's bed. That's bed. That's bed I, time, I sleep then, but I'm not napping. He said he drove to check in on his mother, who has Alzheimer's, at her home before returning to their house around 10 p.m., which is when he discovered the bodies on the ground. And then he has another theory that someone who is mad about Mallory Beach's death killed them. So that's like a just random theories he's thrown out. Then there was a bomb threat during the trial. (laughs) So crazy. (laughs) On February 8th, during the third week of the trial, a bomb threat forced the courthouse to evacuate. So the trial was interrupted Wednesday at about 1230. Um, They just did an extended lunch break. And then they dispatched a bomb squad and then the trial resumed at 310. That's so insane. So there, that's <laughs> a bomb threat. That's um, so 90s. That is so 90s. <laughs> uh, during cross-examination, 
the prosecution asked Alec about his dog's behavior when he was with, with Maggie and Paul at the kennels not long before they were killed. And this is interesting because they asked if the dogs were barking, if they were like going out into the woods acting like mm. they sensed somebody was around that they didn't know. And Alec said, no, there's nobody around that the dogs didn't know. So, like, if there was a murderer there, the dogs would have been going crazy. Like, there's a stranger here. And he was yeah, like, that's no, a they were fine. Party foul on his point. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the cell phone data, which I think is, yeah, this is, this is the nail in the coffin. He, so his phone tracked that he walked 293 steps and made numerous calls during that, like, hour period. He his phone recorded 900 data entries in the space of four hours that night. But then at 849 p.m., his phone locked forever and all of his conversations ended. That's when they say he shot them at 849, that his phone just turned off. He also or his son also made a phone call, Paul, at 840 p.m. that night. Um, and then his friend, Rogan, said you could hear Alec in the background at 8.40 p.m. And there's that video at the kennels. The prosecution said that Alec was had his wife's phone at the murder scene after she was killed and made a series of calls and texts to like make it seem like she was still alive, like responding to texts and calls after she died. Oh, my God. And then there were the, the timeline also said that the backlight was on Maggie's phone. And it was turned off at the same time Alex's SUV drove by a spot on the highway where his wife's phone was found that day. So they think the light was on. He turned off the phone, turned the phone off, and threw it. Yeah. Because his car goes right by where the phone was found. I mean, this guy <laughs> doesn't have the best brains for no. committing any crimes and there's i have some video clips from okay so on tuesday which was yesterday his business partner and friend ronnie crosby takes the stand and alex's lawyer asks him asks him if he thinks alec did it we're talking about two people who were brutally murdered then you're you're, you're headed in the wrong direction you think he did it I don't have I don't have an opinion. I don't have the benefit of the materials you have. So his friend even says he's like, I don't know. His friend doesn't even deny it. He's like, I don't have the benefit of the materials. <laughs> and then uh, this <laughs> this was this is a good one. I was going to send this to you yesterday, but I figured I would save it Ooh. for the show because it's anticipation. I said about detail. So he. He messed himself. He he had diarrhea. Um, he just couldn't control it. And then... Um, and, and I say diarrhea. I'm not talking about at a restroom. I'm talking about in the car, in his pants. Okay. Who did? And... Uh, Alec. <laughs> I was... So this is his brother on the stand. He... I saw this clip and I was like, oh my God, is this after the murders? This is a... After the murders, his brother took him to like a detox place. Yeah. Apparently, Alec shit his pants in his brother's car. Oh <laughs> my god! I mean that. I mean that happens when you're detoxing. That's right. crazy. Right. Oh my god! So that well, was, I guess, to show that like he really did have an addiction. Well, whoever smelt it dealt it. Whoever smelt it dealt it. And then, okay, so whoever this, pooped is the one who, who shoots. Shoot. This is Alec on the stage. What you're telling this jury is that it's a random vigilante. That's your the 12 year old, uh, the 12 year old, five, two people that just happened to know that Paul and Maggie were both at Moselle on June 7th. That knew that they would be at the kennels alone on June the 7th. That knew that you would not be there, but only between the times of 849 and 902. That they show up without a weapon assuming that they're going to find weapons and ammunition there, that they commit this crime during that short time window, and then they travel the same exact route that you do around the same time to Almeida. That's what you're trying to, to tell this jury? You got a lot of factors in there, Mr. Waters, all of which I do not agree with, but some of which I do. So they're like... Between these, like, this 10-minute period, someone 
got onto the ranch, found guns because the guns are like, and just randomly shot them. And also like a specialist was like, he's like, no one's going to bring two different guns to a crime scene. That's just a, not a thing they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like That's John just Wick. not a thing. <laughs> yeah. Is this more Alec? Let me ask you this question. Maybe we'll get to the, to the meat of matter. Is this is crime. Have you had to come out of pocket to pay back the money he stole? Yes, and if uh, you... How much? I, I, and don't tell me you don't know. Well, we're still counting, Mr. Harpoot. Well, how much have you paid so far? We have had to uh, borrow millions to pay back. No, how much have you had to come out of pocket? Well, when you borrow it, you got to pay it back. And I couldn't tell you how much has exactly been paid back uh, as of we sit here today. But and yes, and, and if you're implying that I would come in here and somehow shade truth in any way because of that, that's I would take high offense with that, Mr. Well, Harpoon. I'm not concerned Lee. about your high offense. Are you angry at him for stealing your money? I have no feeling one way or the you other. Don't have any feeling about Alec Murdoch betraying you and stealing your money? You're, the truth. Yeah, I, I admire you. I don't know that you I can handle look the truth. That. Objection, Your Honor. Is sustained. There's not a question. The jury is to disregard the argument. You are not angry with Alec Murdoch? I have had anger with him, extreme anger, Mr. Hart Putlin, because of what he did to my law firm, my partners, my client, his, his clients, our clients, what he did to his family. What he's did to so many people, yes, I experienced a lot of anger. And but you can't walk around with anger. You have to find a way to deal with it and move forward. And I have done that. And if you suggest you are dead wrong, if you think I've come in here and told this jury something because of money, when we, we're talking about two people who were brutally murdered, then you're, you're, you're headed in the wrong direction. Do you think he did it? Do I don't have. I don't have an opinion. I don't have the benefit of the materials you have. Well, let me ask you this. You're angry with him, stole millions of dollars from your firm. You admit your firm's not even called the Murdoch firm anymore, right? It is not. I don't Stand admit that I'm people. angry right now. I told you I've gotten away from that. I don't have any feelings because you can't walk around with anger. I have been very, very angry about it because of what he's done. And he did it in a very callous way, a very deceitful way. Dang. So that's like his former law firm partner, I believe. Interesting. Yeah, that was a a heated argument. I mean, he obviously did it, right? Yes. <laughs> and if I if there is a small chance that he didn't do it, then he hired someone to do it. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Because, I mean, that's also, like, something that they were suspecting is that some of that yeah. money he was embezzling was going to, like, a hitman or something. Right, because all of that money was not spent on drugs. You can't spend, like... Well, that's what he was saying, that they were yeah. like, you'd have to do the maximum amount of opioids yeah. for 140 years to spend that kind of money. So, like, where is that money going? I bet, I bet it's in, like, offshore accounts. It's Yeah. It's hidden somewhere for sure. Right. So, yeah. I mean... We'll see. Uh, what, I think you, the defense, or yeah, I think they rest this week. I think is the Friday. I believe is going to be exciting. The end of the trial. Well, we'll so have to do know. another another wrap up once it all comes out. Um, crazy. If, crazy. If you guys, if you guys know any other information or have any theories or ideas, please call into our mailbag episode. Um, anyways, I am Allie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pumped seagull. Hi, Melissa. Shit your pants in your brother's car, Stetton. <laughs> I've peed in my brother's car before. I'm sure you have. When I was little, I was like, <laughs> how old was I? I was like eight years old. I remember because he was so mad at me. And I had to pee. Well, I was probably younger. Maybe I was seven. And I had to pee so bad. And we were in the car for so long. It was me, my brother, and my mom. And I was in the back seat. <clears throat> And they were, my brother went into Gelson's or something like that to like get something. And I don't remember why. Oh, I had a fear of using public bathrooms as a kid for some oh, reason. Oh, sure. And, um, and my mom started singing Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid do, 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 as like a joke. She, it, cause she knew I had to pee and she was like trying to like, she didn't think I'd actually do it, but I oh, pissed no. my pants in the backseat. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's sad. 
Who among us? Uh, Who all among right, us? so I'm I'm Allie Piss My Pants Seagull. I've also <laughs> shit my pants once, but I won't get into that. All we right, all bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Original. Powered by ACAST.